The gallium arsenide is produced by the phenomenon that is what we call the covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is when the atoms of materials share electrons with another atoms to modify its electrical properties. The shared electrons are attracted simultaneously to the atoms resulting to a force that binds the two atoms together and thus forming a compound. Covalent budding usually occurs uh, between non-metallic elements of similar electronegativity. And uh, this is how gallium and arsenic share their electrons. As you can see, right in the middle, that is the arsenic. Our arsenic has uh, five valence electrons and around it are the gallium atom, each of which has three valence electrons. And now we're going to discuss the different energy levels of the three materials, um, conductor, insulator, and semiconductor. On your screen, that is uh, the energy bands of an insulator. And take note that the bottom part is the valence band where it houses electrons of more than four, so four to eight. And then the big part of the insulator's energy band is the energy gap right there. So it is quite large because it does not allow uh, electrons to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. That is the property of the insulator. And among the three uh, material that we are talking, insulators has the greatest energy gap among the three with a value of greater than five electron volt. So when we have this kind of electron, electron gap, uh, energy gap, then the valence band will have a difficult time jumping from the valence band to the conduction band. And that is how, uh, and that is why the uh, insulators allows a very limited flow of current. The next here is the semiconductor. The difference between the semiconductor's energy band to the insulator is that the energy gap here is quite smaller, ranging from uh, 0.67 electron volt for germanium, we have 1.1 electron volt uh, for silicon, and 1.43 1 um, electron volt for gallium arsenide. Um, the semiconductor doesn't totally uh, prohibits current from jumping off the valence band to the conduction band. The next energy band here is of the conductor. As you can see, uh, the valence band and conduction band overlaps with each other. That means there is no energy gap between the two. And that uh, valence electrons can just easily jump out into the conduction band. And that is how the conductor, uh, conductor materials allow currents to flow to its materials when applied by a substantial amount of voltage. The more distant the electron from the nucleus, the higher the energy state and any electron that has left its parent atom has a higher energy state than any electron in the atomic structure. Temperature effect of covalent bonding at low temperatures uh, near zero Kelvin, all bands are intact, no electrons are available for current conduction, and the intrinsic silicon behaves as an insulator. And then we have a term called recombination, that is the process in which electrons fill the holes, or those are the spots uh, that are left when, a, when an electron jumps out of its orbit. Types of uh, semiconductor materials, we have the intrinsic uh, materials. These are semiconductors that has been carefully refined 
to reduce the impurities to a very low level, essentially as pure as can be made available through modern technology. So in simpler terms, intrinsic semiconductors are undoped materials. So we did not um, apply any impurities to the material itself to alter its electrical properties. And example of that are silicon and germanium because they are um, elemental semiconductor. No impurities were added to them. On the other hand, we have um, extrinsic materials. These are semiconductor materials that has been subjected to doping process. That means we apply um, certain process to it to achieve the desired electrical properties. Uh, there are two types of doped semiconductor materials. We have first the N type or the negative type and we have the P type, the positive type. How uh, is this happening when we change uh, the type of semiconductor material that we have into an N and a P type? So N-type materials are created by introducing impurities. When we introduce impurities, the material now uh, will be considered as extrinsic material. That has um, five valence electrons, such as antimony, arsenic, phosphorus, and bismuth. So this is uh, the covalent bonding that is being done on the silicon material with antimony. So antimony has five valence electrons. Add, um, add that uh, to the pure silicon material with four valence electrons. Therefore, we have uh, a total of nine valence electrons. So the excess of valence electrons will give our material a net charge of negative. And that is why it is named as N-type material. On the other hand, um, to produce the P-type material, uh, a trivalent uh, atoms are being introduced to silicon or germanium. And examples of trivalent atoms are boron, gallium, indium, and aluminum. As you can see on the diagram, when we do a covalent bonding between the boron and the silicon, uh, there is always a hole or a gap wherein there is an absence of electron. And the absence of electrons means that the charge of that is not negative and therefore can be considered as positive. And when this happens, the net charge of this bonding is equivalent to positive and that is why it's called a P-type material. Since we are talking about uh, the electrons and holes, um, for a semiconductor there are two types of flows. The first one is an electron flow and it contributes to a negative, um, negative charge while the hole flow or the absence of electron also produces current and that is what we, know, what we call the hole flow. So hole flow is at the reverse direction of the current flow. So whenever a, an electron flows from one point to another, it leaves a point wherein no electrons is there. So the absence of electron produces a positive charge and therefore the hole flow will flow to the reverse direction of what we have at the electron flow. And these N and P type materials will be used to produce one of the most basic electronic component and that is diode. I am Isagani Briones and see you on the next video.